Hello everyone, welcome to the Lead Ladders, an exciting community that brings the insights and experiences of successful leaders on their journey to the top. I am Shravan Kumar, your host. And our guest for today is Catherine Pomfret, Head of Marketing, CXL and Founder and Director of Pineapple Skies. Hi Catherine, welcome to the Lead Ladders. Can you share a brief about yourself? Hi, um, yeah, the headlines. Um, I'm 25 years into my marketing career. Um, so my first degree was in English and I fairly recently did a, a MSc in data science. So English, maths, it's sort of a really great starting point in this job. So I've worked in retail and e-commerce, in education, in B2B SaaS, um, and a range of businesses in terms of ownership model, growth stage. So B2B, B2C, D2C all of that um and so for the last 10 years i've been head of marketing or director of marketing um i'm a consultant now so i've seen a lot of things a lot of setups worked with a bunch of people and uh you know what there are things i can do now after 25 years standing on my head and there are still things that don't work in the way you expect them to and that means it's still fun and it's still a challenge Great, I understand completely. Thank you again and welcome once again to you. And uh, I keep reading your post on LinkedIn, uh, Catherine. And one thing I wanted to talk about is uh, many professionals are worried about the impact of AI in their careers. While you have 25 years of experience and have, you have seen a lot of things, there's technology involvement into marketing, then you have traditional digital marketing, there's enough uh, uh, the AI coming into act and stuff. So how do you prepare yourself for all these changes? Good question. So when I started my career, I will tell you a story. In my second job, I worked in direct marketing. So we had a database, 14 million customers. We'd segment the customers yes. on a system that had to run overnight. Okay, that's how long it okay. took. We had to run it overnight. We then print, physically print up to 2 million letters not in our okay. office, obviously, with a, with a mailing okay. house. We'd attach mm -hmm. a product sample to those letters. We would post okay. those letters. We would wait for the customer to get the letter and take the physical coupon to a physical shop where the shop would scan it, and that's how we got our campaign results. And it would take weeks and weeks and weeks. And now... GA for real time, I can see purchases going through in real time. I can see campaign performance in near real time. Social media, marketing automation, email marketing, none of these things existed. So thinking about AI, you have to be one of those early adopters, right? Don't be that guy riding a horse on the motorway shouting about how scooties are never going to take off. Don't, don't be that guy. <laughs> so, <Hello. laughs> so what do we, what do we do? AI is going to hit first the people with low level skills. So job one mm -hmm. is upskill, climb the ladder, um, which is why I was so happy to, when you asked me to do this podcast, um, because that's going to buy you some time. Job two, I think, is be that person who knows how to use the AI within a marketing strategy to deliver results. And that's at a strategic level, including the ethical dimension and at least uh, a semi-technical level. Um, and ethic, there's gonna be a lot of jobs in AI ethics and AI right. compliance management. There's, that, that's gonna be new. Job three, mm -hmm. I think, is improve your network and your people skills. So if a job market is shrinking, your reputation and your likability become real assets. And Got if we're it. working with fewer people, we really wanna like the people that we work with. We don't need to put up with those people whose personalities irritate us, but they're good at their job because we can get a machine to do their job. So those, those, those people skills. And then for me, I really think another growth area is gonna be around psychology and the experiential. So the job in marketing to me, it is just psychology. It, this is all we do. Make people mm -hmm. we have never met want to do things, 
repeatedly. Yes. And uh, to me, I think AI is going to take some time to deliver on on that. It can it can speed things up, but there's things it, it I think it's going to take some time. And I think in the next five years, we are going to see a huge demand for experience, for brands to deliver physical experiences to people and connect with them in their area, deliver something that's immersive and sensory and memorable because pendulums swing, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's 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 my my take on it. Okay. That, that's really insightful and i can uh if i think back how you started in terms of uh reaching out to people that's crazy yeah. i would say it's like today's generation i'm sure they will not understand <laughs> yeah coming back uh, as you know this podcast is about leadership and their journey uh so i would uh we'll get back to the questions related to leadership so I would like to ask, uh, be it because of globalization or let's say because of better opportunities, a lot of professionals in today's time is, are working in different countries. But that challenge comes to adopting to new worker environments and also the cultural differences. Uh, so did you face any such challenges? The reason is I know that you have worked in both in India and UK. Did you face the yeah. challenges? So culture isn't about a country, right? And I, I remember when I was living in Hyderabad, and we were recruiting someone and he was a Delhi guy. And, you know, and I was like, really the only British person working in, in that team. And someone said, we can't give the job to a Delhi guy because a Delhi guy, he will not even survive in the South. And okay. everyone sort of nodded. And I said, wait, wait, but guys, like, I'm from, I'm from Britain. I don't know if they forgot. But when I pointed that out, they sort of agreed, maybe, possibly, a guy from Delhi mm -hmm. could move to Hyderabad and, and do a good job. So we can right. think that where someone is from defines mm -hmm. who they are. And, you know, I, I just haven't found that. So I've worked with people from all different countries and, and actually, like, religion or ethnicity or the country you're from that is not what defines a work culture to me it is values you know in an organization do people right. matter or only results mm -hmm. are the standards yeah. of conduct that apply to everyone or just to some people am i allowed to be human on work time or is that a red flag um you know so so whether we bring cake when it is someone's birthday or samosas like samosa yeah. or cake it's the same thing doing nothing you know when we don't celebrate each other's birthdays like that yes. is the thing and so to me what defines the culture in the places that I have worked has been the business ownership model you know mm -hmm. um right. and the weight that you know the importance that the CEO puts on culture as one of the key drivers of results and what they mm -hmm. think that culture should be and how actively they manage it that the issues come when you you don't manage that culture and you get this chauvinism where there's a class one of people and class two of people and everyone knows that's how it is but there is going to be no change because there is no conversation so not everyone thrives and and you know especially when you're young you can when you're not thriving you can think that that is something in you um choose roles for the culture because if the culture isn't one you'll thrive and you'll not succeed and you'll be miserable but i would be really open-minded as as to what that might be and, and where in the world that might be you know i was more at home at home living and working in india than a lot right. of the jobs that i've done in the uk so mm -hmm. culture culture matters but um yeah just you be open-minded and if you've, got a, if you've got a great company culture I think whatever that is in the world is is, is going to be the right move for you got it got it uh, but uh, continuing with that uh, don't you think uh, the even the leadership style and expect, uh, expectations from uh, the job also vary too how do you navigate such differences like uh, you also need to handle a multicultural team and stuff uh. yeah so i i think to lead and, and especially if you're leading in a in a different country with a different culture you need to know who you are 
be the best version of that consistently and without apologies. So that is, that is stage one. Know yourself, be able to do yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And stage two, I think, is, is getting the judgment, the skills, the confidence to be able to flex on that. Um, so we had this issue when we worked together, didn't we? I don't know if you remember, but um, for me, like a nine o'clock start in the UK, a nine o'clock start means you are at your desk working by nine o'clock. And cool. like where we worked, it was kind of like, I can't remember. It was like, well, nine o'clock means you have to be here by 9.30 because there might be bad traffic. <laughs> but three times a month, you could come as late as 11.30 and I was yeah. like, honestly, I thought you guys were joking me. I just, you know, an HR <laughs> had to come and speak to me. And they went, you know, you can't ask your team to come in at nine o'clock. That's totally unreasonable. I was like, <laughs> wow, like, okay. You know, I, 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 I get it. So have a sense of humor. And, and even the most odd things that are obvious to you, are not necessarily going to be how things work and and don't don't try and you know if i had tried to enforce that a why would i that's just my expectation there's no right or wrong there's, there's a lot more of, of you guys than me so so yeah so how you have your style you have your persona but you you version it for what is going to work for the people that you are leading stroke serving who do they need you to be and developing that breadth and, and strength and self-awareness to be authentic emotionally mm. and behaviorally consistent but flex when that is what the people around you need for them to feel comfortable and for them to deliver and your own comfort comes second to that if you want your team to do well. True. I understand that uh, that probably might be a shocker for you, but uh, that's that's how <laughs> the Hyderabad work. <laughs> yeah, I learned. I learned because I, I, you know, I it was it was a brilliant example for me of it's the best illustration of how there is no right way and wrong way. Culture is just the way we do things around here. And if you want to pick a fight on culture, make sure it matters because you know it's a it's a it's a fast way to lose popularity. True, got it. Uh, yes. So, and also, uh, Catherine, uh, similar to corporate, uh, do you feel that a professional should have a personal branding to himself? If so, how can you build? How can you build a strong brand for yourself? I, I, I hate the term personal brand. <laughs> uh, maybe just because I'm old, but uh, you know, I associate that with a lot of posturing and inauthenticity, uh, self-promotion, and and actually, I think there's a lot of bad personal branding because, especially with the you know early career people, because they're trying mm -hmm. to be something that they're not or they're not yet. They right. they're trying to be what they think people want to buy, and. And a career is a really long time to have to maintain something that isn't right. real. It's exhausting. Yeah. So I would I would use different terms around here. I would say your reputation is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your relationships are important. Your values matter. Your connectedness to issues matters. Um, <clears throat> I would say have a philosophy. So have a coherent approach to doing what it is that you do. Have a take and talk about that. Build in public, cultivate relationships, do favors, show gratitude. The, to me, you know, someone could mm -hmm. say, well, that is your personal brand, fine. But, but to me, that terminology make, makes sense. And if you do those things, right. you, you will have a brand, I guess, because you will have a way of showing up and delivering that is attractive to the people who are going to get you and the older you get the more you learn you know some some people are never going to get you some people are never going to buy what you are selling yeah. and and just just do don't just find the people that do because there will be people that do so I think if you're starting out or you're sort of mid-level career I would put way more time into learning how to do mm -hmm. the job and executing and upskilling and, and not mm -hmm. invest so much time worrying about this 
kind of social media driven idea of a personal brand. Of the CEOs I have worked with, uh, one uh, has has a brand and has a social media following. Um, the majority barely go near social media. Um, will that change or is that a privilege that very senior leaders have that they don't need to do this? Um, I don't know, but it's it's definitely, I don't think it's essential for success. Got it. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, but at the same time, probably uh, with the new generation coming in, the Gen Z kind of thing, probably uh, that might change a little. But yeah, I understand yeah. at least being true to yourself is at most important in your career. Yeah. And uh, the learning, and, learning and curve in the start. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you love it, if you love all this, do it. But if, if you're, you know, if you're the marketing analyst who is you know, painfully shy and, you know, but, and, and you uh, don't feel bad that you are not doing this. Like, yeah. So, uh, and also one important thing, uh, thing for a professional is health and well-being. And uh, when you, when you're moving to a foreign country, you leave behind your family and friends. And it sometimes becomes challenging even to have a conversation in a foreign country. So have you felt uh, uh, this challenge to kickstart a conversation for some random person? Oh, I mean, I did, I did, I spoke to a lot of strangers. I did more than that. So when I moved to Hyderabad, I, I posted on some group in, on Facebook. <clears throat> it's like, hello, I've moved to Hyderabad. Who wants to be my friend? Um, and like in 30 minutes, I had 300 new friends. <laughs> um, I know, but, um, some of whom I really did not want to meet up with. But but in that, there were people like Amrita, Michelle, and they are still mm -hmm. my friends today. So so I'm mm -hmm. I'm lucky. I'm I am not shy. If you are mm -hmm. shy, uh, that is gonna be a, a, a challenge. I would chat to everyone, taxi drivers, waiters, and what was really, really nice. Um, cause there mm -hmm. are not a lot of white skinned people in Hyderabad. So people would notice me and people would sort of want to come up and talk to me and like, where are you from? What are you, why are you here? What are you doing? Especially, you know, when, when it was locked down and, and then cafes opened up and, right. uh, you know, and people are like, wow, what are you, what are you, you're definitely not on holiday now. So, so what, <laughs> why are you here? Um, right. and that's, that. So I felt so w absolutely welcomed, um, and yeah, just just go for it. Every every conversation is a beginning. It's an opportunity to learn to find out more about yourself, and you've got like throw yourself throw yourself into it and and try and get out. There were there were some Europeans they got really like stuck in that expat bubble of mm -hmm. going to certain places with other expats. Um, and I just I just feel like, why why go live in a country if you're not going to try and make some local friends that can, um, you know, that, that you won't get the chance to meet back home. So that was, you know, that, and I was like, you know, I'd been to India like 20, 25 times before I moved there. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was maybe easier for me. Um, but yeah, got it. I understand because uh, for me, it, uh, for the early days, I felt a little difficulty in terms of staying here. But yeah, yeah I understand where you are coming from. So yeah, Catherine. So we are, uh, we move to the last segment of it, uh, which would be a little uh, quick rapid fire kind of thing. Oh so no! Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, so here we are. So do you read? Uh, are there any books or podcasts you're currently enjoying or finding useful? Do you know what I, I'm? I'm, I read this a while ago, but I am trying to plug this book to people. It's a book called Life 3.0, and it's by Max Tegmark, who is okay. one of the key artificial intelligence researchers. And, you know, we see all these people on LinkedIn, don't we? You know, I, I use mm -hmm. ChatGPT to write 300 emails in 10 minutes. I've written 500 blogs in a day. That. <laughs> That is not what this is about. And this, this right. book, Life 3.0, it's really going to make you think about the direction mm -hmm. of travel, about ethics, 
about the likely impact it's going to have um, on society, on the world of work. And, and, and people, you know, I really encourage people to level up their, their thinking on AI um, because, you know, we're like, do you remember what, you're probably too young, but when mobile phones first came out, I don't even mean a smartphone, the mobile like. phone, and it had this game called Snake. It was just like yeah. black and white, yeah. And I mean, that that is what chat GPT is, is going to look like in in three years' time. So, yeah, that better make you think and it'll let you start better conversations. Got it. So how do you relax and recharge on your Sundays for the next week? Oh, outdoors. Okay, outdoors, no screen, no human mm-hmm. interaction. Like, okay. honestly, my, myself, the beautiful world that we live in, uh, that is it. That is all I want. That's all I can cope with. <laughs> Crazy. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very much prepare for yourself for the next day. <laughs> yeah. And last uh, thing is, where can people follow you or stay updated on your work or they can, uh, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram? Maybe? Sure. So, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy to connect with anyone on, on LinkedIn. And there's not a lot of Catherine Pomfrit. So I think one of them is a film director. So, I'm the Catherine Pomfret that isn't a film director. <laughs> um, and yeah, I post, I, I try and post every day and, uh, you know, lo- love it when that turns into a conversation. Okay. Thanks, uh, Catherine. Thanks for the insights and experiences you've shared uh, uh, throughout your journey. Uh, I once again, thank you. For thank joining you. Me. Thank you. It's been, it's been, it's been wonderful. Uh, thanks. Thanks. I've really, really in, in, enjoyed it. And, um loved uh loved going down memory lane with you a little bit as well